Hello, hello, good morning or good afternoon, everyone uh, from sunny Vancouver. Uh, my name's Jimmy Wu. I will be your host today uh, for this function point presentation uh, webinar talking all about the function point CRM module. So welcome, everyone. Um, I do have also my uh, partner in crime, um, Sophia Wilson, who's actually with me as well. Uh, so why don't we get started? It is 10 o'clock Pacific time, so let's jump right in. Um, hope you guys don't mind. Um, I'm, my computer and internet does slow down when I share the webcam, so I just wanted to say hi, but otherwise uh, I'm going to turn that off for the time being so that we can all focus. Um, so again, I am the director of sales and marketing at Function Point. So uh, I've actually personally used Function Point CRM tool for a number of years to track my own sales pipeline when I was an individual contributor. So I'm really excited to show you kind of this, uh, some of the tricks of the trade that I've been using for that. And of course, a lot of you know Sophia Wilson, the manager of uh, customer experience on our team as well. So before we get started, in your GoToWebinar control panel, there is a question section. Um, so throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, um, feel free to type them in there at any given time. And uh, either myself or Sophia will be able to, will, um, would love to answer that for you um, as we go through. Um, so for the a quick reminder, every the entire webinar will be recorded and emailed to everyone and so that you can share with others. Um, and we will also send any CRM related help articles that we go through today during the webinar so you can review at your own leisure. But for the agenda for today is we'll take a look at the agency sales cycle. It is a uh, um, and we'll take a look at how those how that sales cut cycle can be re, uh, reflected inside uh, function point CRM modules. Um, how do we track leads within function point? How do we track the client communications and the notes? And also, of course, most importantly, your opportunity pipeline. So you can see, OK, how much uh, revenue or potential deals do I have coming down the pipe? And then it's some of the CRM reporting that's already inside function point. Okay, so I want to start off a lot of, um, you know, function point CRM, we are not a sales force we're, and we never plan on being a sales force. So I do want to be very clear if you're looking for a very robust, complex CRM tool, you know, um, function point is probably not the right tool for you to manage that. Okay, so Salesforce very robust, probably a bit too complex for any small business in my humble opinion. I've used it myself and I, uh, there are things I love, but there are things that I just find you take 10 clicks to complete anything. Um, I also wanna mention we're not a HubSpot, so we're not a marketing automation tool either. Okay. So, and we don't have aspirations or plan to be either a Salesforce or a HubSpot. We really have, we find that as a um, small business agency, you know, sales is, you know, uh, having a simple CRM tool is more than sufficient for the majority of us. Okay. So let's talk about um, a simple agency sales process. So of course, we always start with all the marketing activities. So where you might have your web forms or marketing automation tools, you know, this is really all the awareness early consideration stage. But then there's typically a trigger in your marketing process that might um, cause a salesperson to jump in. So whether they filled out a contact form or such. So that's where really function point starts jumping in. So when the salesperson is involved to start qualifying the lead. Um, after, once you qualify the lead, you might have a schedule a customer meeting. Um, in that customer meeting, uh, you're gonna create and typically follow up with an estimate or a proposal of some sort. And then hopefully you win that at the end. There are a couple optional steps I know some of the agencies who might create a brief in during that process, during that meeting or afterwards. Some people, when you create that estimate, you might even, especially for a large strategy or branding um, or website plan, um, you might even create a proposed timeline or schedule alongside with your estimate and proposal. Okay. So this entire sales process, we'll go through how the sales process will look inside Function Point. 
So the modules in function point that you're going to be using in order to uh, track all of those sales process are the company contacts, the note section, the briefs, and the estimate. So company contacts is where you're going to track all the leads coming in, you know, their email address, phone number. The notes is where you're going to track your communications, your uh, email integration. We also have the briefs, which is optional. And then, of course, the estimate to build your proposal and track your opportunities. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the system. Okay, so for myself as an individual, so I'm going to be talking more from an individual contributor's perspective for the next little bit and kind of go through how I work through my day in function point as a salesperson. So I tip, I had a dashboard, I actually had a dashboard that literally looked like this when I was an individual contributor. So my dashboard had my tasks and to do. So the tasks and to do will quickly list out all the different sales activities I need to perform either today overdue or over coming up. So I got my discoveries and when I hover over the task, I can see the discovery call that I've made with Gina and what my next steps were, which client it is with, um, and of course, when I need to complete this by. Okay. I can also see any job updates. If they are an existing client, I can see that this task is related to the job for an existing client if I am managing that client as well. So I can, so this is a, I personally love this because when I hover over the task, I know exactly what the note was and what I actually needed to do. Okay, so at the bottom half, we have the job, so I can see any existing jobs that I'm um, involved with, and then also if anything's coming up due from the, so if I need to change the project managers. So that's my dashboard, but typically I just work through this task list on at the start of the day. But let's go ahead and take a look. At how, what if, if I want to, um, once I complete my task list, I want to start prospecting. So in function point, um, I personally recommend using the company section to prospect. So you can quickly click on find company. There is a field called qualification. Okay. This is the field I use, and this is a customizable dropdown list to um, adjust to your sales process. In this case, I have lead, MQL, SAL, proposal stage, and client. So I can quickly go in and say, okay, what are the marketing qualified leads that have come over? Click on find. Oh, um, actually, or maybe I should see if there's any proposal stage. See if I have data on that. Okay. So I can see that I have six companies that are within the proposal stage. And I can click into any single one to see more details. Um, so going into a company here, so I'm actually gonna go into a different company that has some better examples called Great Atlantic Insurance. So like any basic CRM tool, you can use this to track the client's address, phone number, who the account, so the AE is really who the salesperson um, has ownership of this account, you know, what rate card that you have. But on the right-hand side, this is where you can see the different qualification and the company type. So these two fields, company type and qualification, are really the two fields you're gonna be using a lot um, to track what type of lead they are. So under qualification, um, again, customize this and then you can update that as you see fit as you move through the sales process. Other areas you can allow have up to 10 custom fields on your company and contact as well. So if you want to track a person's phone number, you want to track their anniversary, their, you know, maybe this custom field was um, the corporate budget year end date. So you can go ahead and have that in there as well. So it's up to you what you would like to do with that. Um, the contact section, you know, this is, you know, you can, when you first start, you will be able to upload um, a bunch of contacts on here, but you can see their phone number, email address, cell phone, title, etc. Now, this is key. One one key thing about this is that you um, please make sure in order for the email integration um, to work, you need to make sure your customer or prospect's email address does exist inside Function Point. 
Once it does, then the notes section is going to have a history of all the things, all um, will be able to have all the email communications you have with that specific contact. So you can see here, this email that was sent by Bobby with Gina Hackman was just automatically uploaded into the notes section here. This is, I personally really like this because it's like tracking a history of all the activities. If I want to see a history of all the communications and activities, definitely use our email integration, which is basically BCCing the um, every single BCCing function point, your function point system. Um, and it, all I need to do is just hover over it to see the details. And so let's let's say I've talked to Gina over the phone and I want to make a note about it. We had a meeting and I want to track a note and also create a follow-up activity as well. So on the right top right hand side, I'm gonna create a note. So note is where you're gonna be tracking all your calls, all your activities, all your meetings um, with the client. You can create different templates on these notes as well. I highly recommend if you want to standardize your sales process, um, always have a different bunch of notes. It's going to help um, standardize your workflow, but it also helps your salespeople to make sure that they did ask all the questions. So for example, if I had a discovery call, who were the attendees? So maybe Gina Hackman, which is the owner, and her needs is that she wants to revamp their website and make sure it has uh, greater than 85 site speed for the new Google uh, requirements, uh, SEO requirements. And maybe she has a budget of 20K to do this. And the next steps is to talk to internal team to strategize and create draft estimate. Right. I can select who this is with. And here's my favorite part of Function Point CRM. If you can take away, and if you can forget everything else on this webinar, I want you to just remember this. This is absolutely, where as a salesperson, I can, once I make the note, when you have that communication, you typically have a next step. And you want, I want to say, maybe send this by next Monday, and I can create a follow-up task right on here. By clicking this create follow-up task and save, a few things are gonna happen. This communication is now going to be saved under Gina and also Great Atlantic Insurance. However, I don't actually need to create, do a separate thing or make in my calendar to do a follow-up or anything, make it in my notepad because when by hitting that create follow-up task, notice the task is now showing up on my to-do list along with the node I just made. So by and I know who it is with, who G, and it's with Gina Hackman, and I need to complete that on April 19th. So really it's it's a great way to track your historical communication and also track the next steps so that you stay on top and not miss your sales opportunities. All right. I hope uh, um, people found that really help, uh, helpful. I personally really loved it, so I, I can't say uh, I can't repeat enough about that. But going back to the notes section under Great Atlantic Insurance, if I ever come back, I can always go in here and be able to see the details and maybe any previous conversations I might have had just by hovering over through this. Cool. Um, any questions thus far, I guess, Sophia, that I can help with before we go into the next step of the sales process? Hey, yeah, thanks for checking in. Um, you know, lots of really good questions coming through. There have been a couple just around the initial company type qualification um, items in those drop downs on how you can label um, the the different uh, companies in here. I just want to let you all know this can be customized through the list maintenance in the back end of your system. So a lot of you are like, wait, what were those? I want to make sure that they're set up that way. 
um, these can be these can be adjusted as you need based off your terminology, your workflow. Um, so that's just that's just something I want to remind everyone of. So if, if there's something that works better for you and this doesn't work, um, that can be changed. So just wanted to elaborate a bit on that. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, awesome. Um, now my recommendation um, for, has been in sales for a number of years is that you can't uh, for the qualification on the company level to keep it high level. This is where you really should, so, um, similar to what I have here. I personally would probably just keep it at lead, MQL, SAL, and client. Okay. Um, it's much more straightforward because I'm going to actually show you the in the next step on the estimate how we can track your actual opportunity stages as well. Oh. All right, so just let's go. Sorry, oh, just ahead. while we're on this page, I just had someone ask about the how did you BCC the FP job in there? And if you don't mind just highlighting that connect to email button there that can provide you with, with those different items in there. Yeah, so in your system, um, you will have a unique um, global BCC email address. So what you want to do, whether you're on Gmail or Outlook, um, you would want to just go into the back end of your Outlook um, Gmail or Outlook setup and have it just auto BCC this, um, have every single email, right, just auto BCC this email address. Um, and for any inbound emails, just have it auto forward to this email address. And once you do that, then like I mentioned before, it will then populate in the notes section as long as you have that contacts email address in function point. Um, and if you will make sure to send in, in the follow up email to make sure have the step by step of where you can grab that global BCC email address. Cool. All right. All right. So next step. Um, let's talk a little bit about the briefs and how that you might be able to utilize that as part of your sales process. Now the brief is an optional step in your sales process. Um, so in when you create the brief, this is a way, if you have a more complex sales process, this is a way to track, say, let's, um, you know, website refresh. You can create that website brief and you can use this as a way to customize the status of your brief. So this might be a way to say, okay, uh, to manage requests from existing clients, for example. Okay. So it's sort of like a queue of your potential sales before they turn into an opportunity. You, know, you might have that check and you can put a potential budget on here and delivery date as well. Um, it is another way because of the status to be able, you can customize this. I've seen some uh, teams utilize this to track like uh, what was submitted, pending estimate, pending approval, et cetera, as a way to track a secondary stage in your process. Okay. So um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and quickly create this brief. Okay. So I personally am a, am a big believer of briefs, even if they are not a customer yet, because for client briefs, this ensures as a salesperson, you remember to ask every single question and set the right expectation up front. But it also builds a lot of value because in function point, you can quickly generate a PDF and a client facing version of this brief. Okay, so in this brief, you can quickly see, oh, let them know, hey, this is what we talked about, when you want this done, what your budget is and what your big pictures are. Um, and these questions are completely customizable and you can use, attach this as part of your proposal or your follow-up. Okay. Highly recommended, but we do have another, um, if you would like to learn more about how Brief is done, um, we did cover that in previous webinars and um, training articles. So, what to, um, um, so we'll focus more on Opportunity Pipeline today though. So to track, create an opportunity. So let's say you've now talked to the lead, there's a good engagement, you know, they want a proposal, you've gotten to a point where you really want to stay on top of this. So the estimate module inside function point also acts as a way to track your sales opportunity pipeline. So when you create the estimate, 
you're going to be able to see that, um, you know, I'm creating this for Great Atlantic Insurance with Gina Hackman. The key fields I want you to focus on is this close probability and also month close. The close probability it will feed into a sales pipeline report afterwards. So as you're talking through this client, you know, maybe this is in a very early research and exploration stage. So my close probability is only 20%. Uh, and I know that this is going to be closed in around May time frame. So let's go ahead and pick and choose what type of services we're going to provide. And also have some expense items as well. So once you create, so I'm hoping that uh, we, you know, everyone is familiar with the estimating process. If you would like to learn more about details of the estimating process, um, we do have a previous webinar back in February that uh, will walk you through every single detail of that. However, I want to divert your attention now to under the basic info tab, there is an approval status. Okay, this is a great place to track the stages of your pipeline, okay, of all the estimates and proposals you've sent out. So in this case, I have this drop down is actually now customizable. Okay. So previously, and we made this change about six months ago, actually. So you can utilize this drop down to track things like maybe if you're in a discovery, client review, proposal, negotiation, verbal approval, agreement, or it's been approved or declined. Yeah. So this is customizable. What that means is, at any given point, if you up keep this updated, you will be able to go in and click on find estimate and say, I want to look for all my opportunities that are maybe in the in review stage. Okay? And that can close with a close probability of greater than you know, 10%. Click on find. Oh, I should have hit find active, but in this case, you can see I have five opportunities that are currently active. Here are their probability and month close with the total pipeline value with it. Um, and then I can, of course, drill down into each one as I see fit. So this is the way, so the estimate, once again, the estimate status so the fields for your pipeline tracking is really the estimate approval status, the close probability, and the month close. So these are the three key fields when you create an estimate to track your opportunity pipeline. Um, questions before we keep going here. Hey, Jimmy. Um, so the couple of questions that are just coming in right now are, actually in relation to reporting on this. So I know you were just showing that list, but how we can get it a little more detailed, maybe for wanting to compare like department to department or like team to team. Um, so I know that you hadn't planned on actually showing these specific reports um, in, in the system, uh, but I just want to let everyone know that like we do have some pipeline reports. Jimmy will talk about where you can find them. And then of course, uh, through our BI, there's definitely lots of options for us to build some of these out. Okay. And if we have time at the end, um, I can definitely try to uh, show, show where those reports reside. Um, I do want to show where that data is coming from first though, um, in the day to day. So now we've created this estimate. Um, as you know, you can generate a client facing version of this estimate to as you see fit. One thing I personally really liked about generating this client facing estimate is the most amount of time before when I was using an Excel or Word or whichever other tool to generate my estimate, um, it was very hard to decide, you know, which line items and customize what line items I want to show or not show. So in function point, once you finish generating your estimate, there's a print column on the right-hand side beside each line item. So in this case, maybe I wanna show just the one line item with the web design cost, but for the expenses, I want to expand on that so that be transparent about it. 
So you can just pick and choose which of these line items you want to show or not show. And by doing that, your client facing estimate will now just show that one line for the web design and then the breakdown for the expenses. So really cool tool. You have your estimate, you don't really need to rejig and revamp things in order to just show the items you want to have. Another key part where that happens a lot for agencies in the sales process, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth. You know, you send the initial website proposal and they're like, well, what if you guys just do all the copy and we have an in-house designer, so we'll just do the design ourselves. Would that work for you? Or we just, you know, let, let us give you all the design work. We have a creative team for that, but we don't have any technical person. So maybe you can just do the web development part. Or perhaps, you know, they decide that, hey, on top of web design, I want you guys to also do, you know, um, the SEO part, you know, make sure it is SEO compliant just really making stuff up now. So in this case, you can create what's called a revision. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, you know, maybe we're gonna do some creative work and just put some random fake numbers on here. Huh. So we added maybe some design for the website. So in this case, we have $3,200 extra. Now, one of the, and I just realized I missed the step. So before I do that, I could have, I should have just clicked on this create revision. So to track, when you create a revision, what's gonna happen is there is now gonna, this estimate number will show in R1. As you make the changes, which I was doing before. So once you make the changes, you're now gonna see that my total has increased, but under the revisions tab, as you're talking to the client, you'll be able to say, okay, yeah, we sent you a proposal on whichever date, um, and it was for 6,300, but because of what you additionally requested, we're now at 8,800. If they decided, hey, the 8,800 is not what we want, I can always go back to the previous one, and make this the active estimate instead. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, where did I store the previous proposal I sent to the client? It is, as long as you use this create revision, it's going to track and keep track and all the historical and the previous or active estimates you've been using. Um, and you can jump back and forth between them as long as this job has not been approved yet and the work has not started on it yet. Uh, and last but not least, I'm gonna go back to the previous one. If you're sending a revision, you don't, because you can select which line item to show or not show, maybe they approved the previous web design part and we just need them to approve the creative services. So you can just say, I wanna generate the client facing version of the new items I've added and voila, here you go. Now my estimate is very quickly created, but it's still kept under the same job bucket. So in overall, that is how function point CRM works. It's very straightforward. It's a very simple process. Um, again, company will track all of your leads. The notes is where you track your communications. Briefs are optional. And then estimates is where you track your opportunities with the approval status. Um, the probability and the month close. So I think I see some uh, questions trickling in. Um, before we go into reporting, is, were there any questions? No, they're all about reporting, Jimmy. <laughs> they are all about reporting, okay, okay. All about it. <laughs> all about reporting, okay, sounds good. So let's talk about reporting. So my personal, personally, if you're looking, trying to find something quick, I always recommend using the find module. Um, Cause I, let's say I wanna say, uh, let's say I wanna look at all, all opportunities where I might close in the month of April. So this is, and you know, close to greater than 50% probability. 
click on find active. Or maybe I just want to find everything that's greater than 50% probability. Click on find active and voila. This is the quickest way to take a look at your active pipeline report um, and also be able to drill down into each one. However, if you want, if you would like a more robust report, they exist in the reporting section. Now, if you, you might have attended our previous last week and the week before some BI reporting, I will say that our sales reports have not been transferred over to this um, BI reports yet. However, they still do exist in, in the CR, in the re, standard reports section. So in the standard reports, there's a tab called CRM and sales. Um, so I'm not sure why I'm not seeing all the reports. Let me make sure quickly I have the permissions to see everything. Missing a couple of reports on here. Okay, so let's take a look at this new business by account executive and qualification level first. So in this case, you can filter to say which account reps you want to look at. Uh, you know, what are the approval statuses? Maybe I don't want to see, I only want to see everything that's in the pipe. I don't want to see approved or declined yet. And I want to look at it for all my clients. And So in this Excel report, you're going to be able to see that um, new business. So I can see the different qualification stages, which is from the client um, company level that we talked about, that dropdown of the lead SAL, SQL that you can customize. So in this case, I can see each qualification stage, who the account, the blue line shows the account rep, the yellow line is the qualification stage for each one. So for Jenny Lee here, she has four active opportunities. What type of job, uh, industry, the estimate she has, and what type of job it is. And on the right-hand side, we can see more details, including the hours, how much is labor, how much are expenses, and the total pipeline. So she has $47,000 here. However, for the close probability, this also show you, shows you the weighted probability um, weighted pipeline so the weighted pipeline means what the total value of that opportunity multiplied by the probability you think it will close at so in this case you know she didn't she hasn't really updated the first three opportunities but she did say that this last one last opportunity line 20 here with this 2009 wilderness first responder handbook is has a 65 percent chance of closing and it will close in January. Or, so the weighted pipe, weighted value is 37.96. So this is a great way to take a look at your sales pipeline report, and the bottom will give you a grand total of what that looks like. So that's one of the most common reports inside Function Point. Um, there are also in the BI report, if you do have um, the custom reporting um, add-on, you can create a lot of um, your own sales pipeline report as well. Um, are there specific reports? I guess people have asked um, that I can. Hey, yeah. yeah, good question. So there's a couple of good ones. Um, the first one being, we did have, uh, Francis just mentioned, a way of viewing uh, the pipeline values. So like close probability versus estimate um, total. I think you had shown a list earlier. Sorry, I've been frantically answering questions. So sometimes I miss exactly what's happening on the screen, but that was a question that Francis had asked. Okay, so, um, so you want to be able to see the sales pipeline um, oh francis actually just mentioned to me it's been answered with a winky face so i'm so sorry to have wasted your time on that mention <laughs> no don't don't no worries about that um i will show kind of um 
let me, were there any other questions before I, I wanted to show one more report that I built in my own system through the BI reports that might be uh, quite interesting for many of us. Yeah, there was one more from Lisa and it was just around being able to see the difference between different revisions. And I know this is a question that happens pretty regularly. Um, just around, you know, if you have three revisions, how do you actually see what those differences are between the values in them? Okay, great question. So I'm gonna go back to the website refresh example we created earlier. So we did create a revision of R1. So when you open up the estimate under the revisions tab, the quickest way is to go to this revisions tab and you're gonna see the two different versions I have here. And while it, this one doesn't show the exact line by line breakdown, but you can see that overall, the difference in the value is 6,300 versus 8,800. And then the difference are all in the labor cost. Okay. Now, if you wanna compare it side by side, I mean, there's no easy way to do it. What I would recommend is, I personally like to just open it up in two different tabs. And I'm on a Mac, so I like to do this like side by side comparison. And then you can go into the side by side comparison. So I got the website refresh, the original versus the revision one. It's a little bit of a workaround, but that's kind of how I would compare it side by side between the two. I hope that helps. Um, and kind of like a little trick that I do personally. Awesome, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, no problem. Okay, um, so let's talk about some of the custom reports you might be able to do. So in the reporting side, um, there's a couple cool reports I found a couple agencies utilize. So let me go into the right system. So you can, um, in your case, if you have, um, if you're creating from scratch, you can create it from what's called the estimate data report. So this is where, again, um, all the opportunities are being pulled from. Um, to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the one I've already created. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is show you the raw data first. Filters, yes, I did create a bunch of filters. Okay. So I'm now showing all my sales pipeline. And in this case, I can see each line item is the different, op each opportunity I've created with the comp client, what their approval status is, the value of those pipeline, and also if there's a closed probability filled in. What I've done is I've created a weighted revenue. Okay, so the weighted revenue is once again essentially the value of your opportunity multiplied by your closed probability. It is a much more accurate way to measure how much you might close. So once you do that, you can then create what's called a pivot grid or bar graph. So in the pivot grid, I can quickly see, okay, for each of my account executives, what is um, the date, you know, estimate close month that they might have, um, and also the value versus the weighted for each one. So as you can see in this case, my issue here is my, my reps are not very good at updating the opportunity close probability percentage, except Miro. Miro does a good job of that though. So this is a great way to do that and see kind of what's coming down in the next month. And you can, of course, quickly filter by your estimate close month to say April or whichever month it is to see. So in this case, for my April, I only have Beth, who has about 23,000 in pipeline. Okay. And you can, of course, visualize this more in a bar graph as you see fit. So if I look at it on a 
month-to-month -month basis, I can do that as well. Or um, I should put the yeah. so maybe I want to compare how much pipeline each of my rep has. So in this case, I can quickly see, okay, each of my rep, the stages of the pipeline or um, the approval status of each. So Bobby has, you know, closed a bunch, um, has a bunch that's in review, but she, he also closed a bunch during this time, time frame. So that is function point CRM at a glance. I know I went through that quite quickly, but I hope I showed you a few tricks um, that you could take away and uh, apply it to your day-to-day -day sales activities as well. Um, we have about four minutes left here. So I wanted to see if there are any questions before I give the top four tips I have when using our CRM system. Hey, Jimmy. Um, you know what? I think I've been able to clear up the majority of these. I do have some questions just from people saying that they can't maybe see specific reports. Um, just an FYI to everybody, there are permissions uh, within the system. So there's a chance that maybe you don't have permissions to be able to view some things. Um, there's also a chance, uh, something I, I do regularly notice is that the system will start by default on what your recently viewed reports are. Um, so you may just need to click into all to be able to have access to everything. Um, so these are just uh, things that if you're not automatically seeing a report, um, it could be just because of what section you're in and you just need to switch it up. Um, also, a lot of questions coming in that are very specific to uh, certain workflows and systems. And of course, since we're on the live webinar, it's harder for me to get into your system and actually go view what's going on in there. So if you have any specific questions, um, not only will I follow up if they're in here, but uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out to our success team at success at functionpoint.com. Um, they are there to uh, work with you and make sure that you have everything set up. So. Um, you know, if later on tonight you have an aha moment or a question um, that we weren't able to tackle here today, don't hesitate. Please reach out to them and they'll be able to help you out. Okay, awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, so I want to go back to giving some of the tips that I have. So in our CRM tool, so let me clear the highlight first. There you go. So as you can imagine, the first tip is my, again, my favorite, which is use the create follow-up task. If you're an individual contributor or you're, you're trying to track a sales note and you know you need to follow up, it's a hot opportunity, use the create follow-up task. It is by far the, you know, function. it's weird, but function point is the only CRM tool that has this where you can create a note and a follow-up task at the same time. Um, and uh, I, I loved it. I still wish I have that. Um, the second one is customize your estimate status dropdown. Now this is, we updated this for a reason. It is a great way to track your sales opportunity stages moving forward. I will give a forewarning. If you do use utilize this to track your pipeline, um, this, uh, it will be a move forward. So after you update that dropdown, then any new opportunities, or you might need to go back and update any of your existing opportunities to the new statuses that you've changed to. Next way, I do recommend using a client brief, especially for your large projects, to track your engaged leads. Um, way to track your engaged lead, but also give your customers a, just a better sales experience. And last but not least, Utilize the estimate revisions to track your estimate changes. Um, if you haven't done that, um, definitely do so. Um, but yeah, but I wanna, I guess, thank everyone for joining the webinar today. Uh, thank you for putting up with another, uh, to, and I hope I was able to transfer some of my sales knowledge to your team as well. Awesome. Thank you, Jimmy. It's always a, a pleasure doing these webinars with you and lots of great questions. Again, anyone, any follow up questions tonight, um, don't hesitate to reach out to our success team. We want to make sure that you uh, are fully utilizing the system. Awesome. And one last reminder, we will be uh, this webinar is being recorded, so you will be able to get a copy of this and feel free to 
um, with some of the support articles of the areas that we talked about today. Thank you all again, and uh, I hope to see you in future webinars. All right, thanks.